Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So in this one here, I wanted to do a Q&A video uh, regarding, I guess, the, the final episode here and then just what the future of the story is going to be here. So obviously, if you do want to take part in these Q&As, definitely go join the Discord. The server name is Appetite for the Dead. The link for that will be in the description of this video. I always do these Q&As every single Wednesday, and I usually ask for questions around Sunday, Monday, or whatever of uh, every week. And yeah, I get to it every Wednesday. And so right now, we're sort of waiting any sort of official news on Daryl Dixon Season 2. And uh, there's a lot to talk about right now, you know, for The Walking Dead. I imagine for April, things will be a little bit slower, but... Obviously, there's still a bunch of stuff we can talk about in terms of the ones who live and then just, you know, get into some stuff with Daryl Dixon season two Then I imagine in May around there, I think, is where we'll probably get a teaser trailer uh, release date and all that. And then uh, we'll have to see when, when the show drops. Right. But now's the fun stuff. Now is the, the time where we can actually, you know, focus more on like, you know, like the, the topic videos where we focus on like, well, what about this thing happening? Or what about this? Let's focus on these characters, break down things that could happen. Let's go rewatch older episodes and break them down. And that's one thing I think I will actually do during this break here is go rewatch older episodes and break them down in terms of doing like a 30, 40 minute review. And um, yeah, so expect the next one coming out very soon. I did do actually one for episode nine of season four, and that was a lot of fun, but I'll probably do it with a better quality camera and all that. So I'm going to work on that with my brother because I saw his Twitch streams and yeah, they look way better than anything that I'm using in terms of a, like an actual video camera here. So I'm going to get get on that like right away, literally today, because uh, yeah, I want to stream with that quality. That's amazing. So anyways, make sure to be a subscriber if you want to get all my content like this but let's get into the first question here q a how do you think daryl will react to the news that carol will tell him about rick being back and why do you think daryl doesn't return so i'm guessing that you're assuming that you know what carol was mentioning was the fact that you know rick and michonne did come back i think that that is possible that that's what she said and that would be a really exciting part to season two of Daryl Dixon is Daryl finding out that rick made it home right like i think that part of it you know would make daryl want to come home but I also think that the reason why he doesn't return is if he knows that he's home and he's safe, then it's like, you know, I don't have to worry about that. And then he has confirmation that he's actually alive, right? And just like what that means. And so, you know, did Carol see Rick and Michonne? You know, I have a lot of questions about that. I hope not. Like, I hope that a lot of that stuff doesn't happen off screen because I know that the next show that they're working on is supposed to be more of the reunions with everyone else, right? So I just hope that they don't show too many of the other characters reuniting with Rick and Michonne off screen. So I just, yeah, that's my only concern with that. But besides that, you know, Daryl, if that does end up being the case and he reacts to those, that news, yeah, that, I think that'd be really incredible. q and since Rick is back at the Commonwealth around the time Daryl left, what do you think is stopping them from going to France once they find out Daryl and Carol's location? Rick and Michonne seem to have helicopters, which is more than enough for the trip. Well, I'm assuming that timeline-wise, it doesn't really make too much sense. Like, it's possible that, uh, you know, maybe, like, maybe the person Carol's mentioning isn't actually Rick and, and Michonne, right? Like, it might not actually be that. Maybe we're still assuming that, but it's still going to be someone different. Like, I really wouldn't put it past Gimple to have someone else there, right? And maybe have Morgan or other characters a part of these spinoffs instead. So... I, I, I'm not entirely sure yet. Like, we'll have to wait and see for sure if it is Rick and Michonne. And if it is, I mean, yeah, there is that part to it. But we'll have to wait and see because the timeline is very, very messy. So I'm not entirely sure where Rick and Michonne are at the time that Carol's going to France. Because, again, that's under the assumption that who Carol's talking about is Rick and Michonne. It might not be. Even though it really seems like it right now, we have to actually have wait and see. Because Gimple, he always makes things seem like that. And then all of a sudden we watch the episode and it's like, no, it's not that at all, right? So Q&A, now that season one is over, putting aside what you want, do you think season two will happen? So ignoring everything that I want and sort of any sort of bias I have towards really wanting a season two, I think a season two is going to happen. I, I think where I question you know, uh, what's going to happen next is more of like, you know, are we going to get a season two and a season three? And I more mean like not a season two of the ones who live just like the next limited series, right? So it's a part two to the ones who live. It's probably going to be called something different because I kind of think they'll do like three limited series and each one will be called something different. The first one was the ones who live and then we'll see about the other two, right? So I'm assuming that they definitely will just based off of the way that they were talking about it, you know, like if they were saying they were done, and then that's it. And then, you know, then I think that would just be it. And even if they were kind of saying like, yeah, you know, it'd be kind of cool to, to do this and that. They were going further than that. Like they asked an Guerrera, you know, like hypothetically, what would a story be like in the future if you were to come back? Like, what would the characters be doing? And she had a whole thing. She was like, yeah, well, you know, uh, Rick and Michelle would definitely want to help out the family and stuff and live that, that family life. But 
there is that obligation to the CRM and and helping out people there and and like helping out with resources and all of that. And she went into detail with that. So I'm like, okay, so you thought about this a little bit more, right? Andrew Lincoln, you know, he said that he talked at length with uh, I'm guessing Gimple and others, you know, about reuniting with like Negan, Daryl, and the other characters and stuff. So there seems to be a very loose plan for the next part here. And Gimple wants it. Like here he said he wants more Rick and Michonne story. He has everything in his head right now. And he said that it might just be fan fiction. Maybe it never happens. You know, it's just a dream of mine right now. But what I will say is that those dreams tend to come true. So I think personally, when you look at that, it is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And that's kind of what Andrew Lincoln said. He was like, if Deny and Gimple come up with a really amazing story, and it's like just as good as what we just did in terms of the ones who live, then he, then he said there's an infinitely amount of chance that, you know, we're going to do it, but he just doesn't know when. So I think it's just a matter of they got to get the story right. And that's sort of where we're at right now. So yes, I do think a season two or a next series is going to happen, but it's just very, very early on in the writing process. And we'll have to wait and see just sort of, you know, the, the next update. So the next update is Comic-Con. So we'll see what they say about that then. And if there's no update, then we'll have to wait to New York Comic-Con and just kind of keep going from, from there, right? Q&A, is Thorne alive? Now... It, I, it did seem like she died, and I'm assuming that she did die, but I do want to do a video on that, though. I actually want to do a video talking about whether or not Pearl Thorne died, because it actually seemed like maybe maybe she bled out, maybe the walkers, you know, got her, but I think there is a chance that she could actually be alive. Uh, if you watch this scene, it kind of seems like there's a real good chance that she could be, right? So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that, but Q&A, do you think Morgan and Dwight's stories are over? No, for sure they're not. I think that, you know, Lenny James said he was, like, done playing Morgan, but only in the sense that he doesn't want to play the same story again. And I think Dwight would come back. The actor probably would come back. So I think if Morgan was on, like, a show, like, you know, with Rick playing Morgan, you know, involved there, then definitely he would come back, even if it was, like, on Daryl or Dead City, right? I think he just wants to be a part of those stories and not just a part of, you know, the uh, I guess Fear the Walking Dead and doing stuff like that. I think that kind of stuff, you know, he did it just because, but I also just think that he wants to do something better, something different with the character, and not just go back out there and do the same old thing, right? So, yeah, I think that definitely, you know, we will see them again for sure. Q&A, opinion on Aaron joining Dead City. I would love that. It, you know, if they can get other characters to join those shows, definitely, you know, like... It's going to be a bit before this next part of the Rick and Michonne story, you know, comes out or happens. And so I think, you know, get as much characters as you can onto, onto Dead City and the other shows. And then it'd be really incredible. Q&A, Beal talked about having spies and communities. I think this will be how the CRM continues an antagonist going forward. Do you think Lance was one of these spies? I believe the Triple P might have signified someone was a spy. That's a really, really good, uh, I guess, guess. I think that that's probably most likely what it is. Because I don't know what else it could be. If you remember on the board, you know, in, in the, at the very end there at the CRM base, the Cascadia base, it said a triple P exception, right? So I wonder if spies get an exception to certain things, right? So I, it kind of makes sense to me. And Lance, definitely, I believe he was a spy. Out of everyone there, it just makes the most sense, right? And he had that scene where he talked with Pamela Milton about certain you know, uh, people that they have alliances with and all that. So I think for sure he was a spy. And there's probably going to be other spies throughout, you know, a lot of the other shows that were going to be like, oh, that person was actually a spy. That will be revealed at some point in the future. Definitely that part of the story isn't over yet. So Q&A, did they just end on Rick dooming the human race with no solution or explanation for what's to come? Is that going to be season two's plots uh, with the Echelon briefing? I mean, I, I think that that's also a part of it. Like, I was wondering that as well, you know, like he does mention, you know, the, the 14 years or whatever. Rick never told anyone that. Like Rick never told anybody, you know, what Beale said. Yes, Beale and them had plans to do all that stuff. But that specific line, he didn't tell anybody that. So I wonder if that is something that could come up in the future where Rick is just like, you know, I guess Beale did say that we only have 14 years left. And that's the thing, the CRM, they're giving out supplies now to everybody, right? So I feel like you have even less time now. So We'll have to wait and see, I think, uh, what happens with that. But, you know, what Beale said there definitely will come into play at some point in the future because it was such a big line. And not only that, you know, I think Gimple knows of the fan reaction now to what happened, you know, with the CRM and Beal. A lot of people are very disappointed about it. So I think that that's a way you can sort of, you know, fix a lot of that is adding 
some of those elements there and then you can overall make the story a lot better q a how do you think the movie trilogy would have played out now if they were implemented uh better worse higher or lower budget more time to write the script if a year in between each movie like uh, movie one would be the background stories so episodes one and two movie two would be episodes three to five and then three would be the finale with more time with beale and all that I, I i think that the entirety of the ones who live would have been the first movie if you just look at the story of The Ones Who Live, it makes sense for that to be the first movie. The background story stuff for episode one and two, there's no conclusion or anything in that to make it a, a good first movie. Like, you would you would explore some stuff of them trying to survive this and that, and it would end with a, a reunion between Rick and Michonne, but, like, you would have to make the story way more compelling than what they told, right? Uh, and then if you go to the second movie, and that is sort of, you know, them after they, you know, escape the CRM and then sort of catch up on stuff. And then maybe it ends with, with Jadis' death. It's still just not like movie like. Like, it's very TV like still, you know. And then the finale is like the final like battle. To me, the whole entire story that they told, that works for a movie. A good, like, it would have to be like two and a half hours for sure. That works for a really, really good movie in terms of pacing and stuff. So I think when you look at it, this all fits one movie. So I think that's why they're open to doing more is because originally they, they were going to do a movie trilogy. And so I just think that they're taking time in between each movie and, and their focus with this is sort of similar to a movie. So that's why I think that, you know, they weren't ready to announce a sequel yet. And I think that they're going to work on the story and all that and that'll eventually come out. So that's why I say 2027, because I think it's going to be a bit before we really get anything. And I think 2027 is when we're going to see it. So maybe there's no announcement for another like year, year and a half or something. And then they announce it get to writing and film it and all of that. And maybe that takes, I don't know, maybe that takes a year, year and a half or something. I don't know, maybe 2027 is too far, but I just think that this might take a bit longer than we're expecting. So I just think 2027 is a good guess. It might be late 2027, right? Q&A, the whole chlorine gas blowing up part of the story, didn't they already do this with Portland and World Beyond? Is World Beyond just not canon anymore and is scrapped? Where's Silas in all of this? He should have been with Jada's. Well, Silas was like a normal CRM soldier, so I'm guessing he had, you know, jobs that he had to do. And uh, in terms of the chlorine gas, they stopped it from attacking Portland. So, uh, yeah, the Ones Who Live story at the very end, the finale, was kind of a very similar plot to World Beyond, which is definitely very, very frustrating. But uh, it, it is really, it is silly overall. But anyway, Q&A. Do you think the reason Daryl's staying in France is because he hears of another Grimes in France dealing with all the variant walkers? Sorry, I yawned for some reason, but aka Jeffrey Grimes, Rick's brother, being a villain in Daryl Dixon. Like, if they wanted to go there, they could. They definitely could, but I just don't think that is something that makes too much sense unless they were very, very desperate to save the Walking Dead universe, right? And honestly, I'm okay with them doing that because it is a thing in the comic. And you got to remember, in the comic, like, Jeffrey Grimes came out of nowhere as well. There was one reference to him, like one like early, early reference that Lori mentioned in like issue three or something where she said something about like, you know, Rick's younger brother, Jeff, or like, I don't even know if she said Jeff, but maybe she did. It was like one line and that was it. Rick never talked about his brother the entirety of the comics, like not at all. It was, there was no mention to him at all. So it would be kind of similar to, you know, what happened here. And, you know, his brother is much younger and uh, obviously went to Barcelona and Spain and stuff or whatever. Um before the apocalypse started and stuff, and so was trapped out there. In the comic, he does die pretty much right away. So they would have to change that, obviously. But if they wanted to, they could do that. I think that would be absolutely incredible. I would love for them to do that, but it's just how do you make it believable for everyone else, right? But then you can get really good casting there, and then that would be really, really fun, right? So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Q&A, do you think the info from the Echelon briefing is going to be the next big story arc for The Walking Dead? It will for sure be a focus, but it's going to have to be in Rick and Michonne's story. I think some of the stuff with, with Beale's spies and stuff all over the world, yes, we'll see some of that, right? But I think Daryl, like, if there is a spy for the CRM, he's not going to really know what that means. So there's there's a lot of things like that where, you know, you have to try and make a little bit more connections there. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll say that I think that for sure the Echelon briefing will be the, uh, a big part of the next story here but yeah I, i'm guessing that they're going to be wondering you know like are we running out of supplies is that a thing like was major general beal right right q a are you hoping that daryl dixon will now go down more into the sci-fi route 
storyline with the variant walkers or do you still see them doing another character emotional story with like what they did last season with Laurent? I think that uh, the variant walkers are going to be a big part of season two. Uh, I've yeah, I won't say anything more than that, but I know that for sure the variant walkers are going to be a big part of it. And uh, in terms of the whole emotional story, I mean, they always have that every season. So I think that that still will be a thing for sure. Like they, they will build on that. I think it's important because Isabel, I love Isabel as a character. Um, you know, and I think that the whole relationship between Laurent and Daryl also works, right? It's kind of a, a father son relationship. And so, you know, just develop that a little bit more. Carol's going to be there too. So how does that change the, the dynamic of all the characters? And then in terms of variant Walker stuff, they definitely will be doing that. Um, like I, I'm so confident in it. Hune, if you could change three things in the ones who live, what would it be and why? Okay. So if I could, if I could change three things, I would really make it so that they, they didn't, you know, I guess end the CRM arc. They never killed Major General Beale. And Rick actually took, you know, Major General Beale's um, option there in terms of bringing all of his family and stuff back here. And so maybe that's where the season ends. They're all happy. They're able to stay there. It looks a little scary in terms of, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea, but, you know, we're all together now. This way you're keeping the CRM a threat and all that. And I think the reason why they didn't want to go down that road is because doing that confirms that there's more story, right? And uh, I think right now, like, there's a part of it that, you know, they want to just put a complete story out there right now. And, uh, you know, a next story will just have to be as good and interesting, you know, to, to do a season two or whatever. So I think that they really just wanted to tell a complete story here. And they do want to come back, but they, they're, they're excited about starting something new and all that and starting fresh. So I think that's why they never did that. And that's why the CRM arc ended here is because of that reason there. And I think AMC probably had issues with that, obviously. But, you know, AMC handed everything over to uh, uh, Deny and Andrew and stuff. So I just think that was sort of, you know, that's why we got the story we did. Q&A, do you still have hopes that there will be a season two? They had the radio there at the end to sum up what happened to the CRM and civilian oversight. They could have used that as season two material. Well, that probably is going to be that. Like, I talked about that before. Denai Guerrero actually mentioned in an interview with comicbook.com because she was asked about, like, a future story, right, like, after The Ones Who Live. Because at first she was asked, like, you know, will there be a season two or anything like that, a new series or whatever. And she just said, you know, I can't answer that or whatever. And then she was asked, like, well, really? Like, you can't respond to that? Like, the show's over kind of thing. And then she says, like, you know, it's my job to misdirect you, this and that, you know. So it's basically, like, it's contract stuff. You know, they got to work on this story. They don't want to confirm anything or give any hint yet. Like, they just want to work on the story and stuff. And later she was asked, you know, hypothetically, after the ones who live is over, what do you think Rick Michonne and the family would be doing now? You know, like afterwards. And then that's where she went to a whole story there. So that's kind of, that gave me the hope right there that I'm like, okay, so Denai Guerrero has really thought of this, of like, what's going to happen next, right? So yeah, the, the CRM is still going to be involved, obviously, and they're going to be helping people out, you know, bringing, uh, I guess, supplies and stuff to communities. And uh, obviously focusing still on their family life and all that. I think that will be the, the setting or the setup, like the premise, I guess, for the very first episode of season two. And just the villains and stuff and what happens around that, we'll have to wait and see. And I think that's why we got to watch Daryl Dixon and Dead City especially, because I think that's going to set up a lot of that. Q&A, who do you think was a better villain, Beale or Pope? Honestly, I'm going to have to go with Pope just because... He was overall, I think, I mean, he had more screen time and he just, he was more fleshed out as a character. And I, I hate to say that because I really liked Beale, but, um, you know, I guess Beale had a better story arc overall in those first couple of episodes, but I wanted more from the character. So yeah, you know, I couldn't choose Beale here. So Q&A, do you really think Beale was right about humanity being over in that short amount of time. Personally, I believe, uh, I don't think that he was right. I believe that he was probably in some way right. I know people were saying, if you look at that one episode of The Walking Dead, or Tales of the Walking Dead, that episode is set 35 years into the future. Remember, there's only like one or two people there. There's like barely anybody around, right? Um, so like, you know, in the sense he said that it's extinct, He's kind of true. Like the thing about extinction is like when it first happens and stuff and it's, you're in the process of that, there might be like one person here or this and that around, right? But you're basically like your days are numbered, like you're pretty much extinct, right? And, you know, 14 years might not be the exact number, but if you look at that episode, uh, there's just walkers everywhere and it's just, it's literally just him. Like no one else is around. And I remember Gimple talking about that episode and saying that there's something very interesting about it. And so looking at that episode now, 
I really wonder if that's what that is, is like Beale was actually right. And some of humanity has been sort of doomed, right? Q&A, would you kill off Negan if it means getting Glenn and Carl back? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, yes, I would. I probably would. I, <laughs> I, you know, I really like Negan. He's like one of my favorite characters. But I, you know, if, to kill off Negan just to get Glenn and Carl back, I, I would have to. Because Carl adds so much to the story. Glenn as well would be, be so amazing to have back. So I probably would, weirdly. Q&A, how different would the ones who have be if Carl lived and went with Michonne to find Rick? Would you have preferred it? I would have, but I also don't think Carl would have done that. I think Michonne still would have left because Denai Guerrera wanted to leave the show, right? So I think she still would have left and Carl would have been a part of the whole Commonwealth arc and then the ending of the Whisperer War, right? So I, I think he would have stayed behind. I think I think it would have been Carl and Judith. I don't think RJ would have existed, though. It, you know, if they never killed off Carl, it would just be Carl and Judith. I don't think RJ would have existed at all just because I think RJ, you know, creating that character was, you know, a response to killing off Carl in season eight. So to me, you know, I think that Carl probably... You know, he would have been there in that reunion scene there with uh, Rick and Michonne. And then, I mean, I could see Carl being a lead of a show at some point in the future, right? Like, that's sort of my thing that I, I, I hate with this is that I'm not saying Judith couldn't really be a leader at some point, but like Carl's already closer to that age, especially after all the time jumps here. He would have been in his early 20s and all that. Like, at this point right now, he could lead a spinoff, right? So it's kind of, yeah, that part's frustrating. Q&A, if Dead City takes place years after The Ones Who Live, then could Rick have already reunited with Negan and others before Dead City even took place? That is possible, but what I will say about that is I don't necessarily believe in the timeline of everything. Like, I, I don't know. Like, they will set shows around, you know, at this point and this point. But things changed so much. Like, even the ones who lived, they kept saying, like, oh, it was eight years. So at some point, it would be 10 years. And then you, you'd look at the timeline of everything. And it's like, even with that show, they kind of messed it up. Like, generally, I would say the ones who live takes place like a year after the very ending of The Walking Dead when Judith and uh, RJ are sort of, you know, they're, they're looking at that field or whatever. Like, the very last shot there. I think that's where that takes place. It's about a year later. And then uh, Daryl Dixon is about, you know, six months before that. Or it's about at the same time as, as the ones who live. And then I think Dead City is two or three years later after that. So it's possible, but they could have changed the timeline so much. That, like, honestly, who knows how much time has passed between the very first episode of of the ones who live in the very last one, right? So, Q&A, do you think the CRM story will continue with another villain? For example, Madame Genet, or is the CRM friendly now? I think that they could connect it with Madame Genet, but also the CRM story might just be, like, maybe they're just friendly or they're, they're the good guys now. Um, Madame Genet, to me, was always the more interesting villain anyways, because I like the Variant Walker stuff. I really do. The military stuff is cool, but what I really liked about the the military stuff with, uh, you know, the CRM and all that was more because they were trying to find the cure and, and all of that. I really liked that aspect to it. But I think, you know, Madame Genet and what she's doing with Variant Walkers and using them as weapons and all that, that is so cool. That is so, so exciting. And, you know, like that story there makes any story amazing. So I just imagine if like Rick was a part of that, right? It would be amazing, like Rick versus Variant Walkers. I would prefer that story over anything with the CRM. So, yeah, to me, you know, if the CRM is not the main villains, then definitely make Madame Genet the, the next villain. And I think that would be kind of cool, you know, to actually have Variant Walkers start to swarm America. And uh, then what do you do, right? The, the CRM is going to be involved at that point. And that's where things would get very, very interesting. Q&A, when do you think we could see General Beale's son, Mason Beale, and could he be the one that will take the place of Sebastian Milton and ultimately be the one to kill Rick Grimes like in the comic? I think it definitely is very possible if, if they can get the actor to come back and all that and they work out that story. I know a lot of people, whenever I say that, people get really mad whenever I talk about Rick's death, but it's a thing in the comic, and that's the thing with these characters, is that that's a thing that can actually happen. Like, you gotta remember, you know, for the longest time now, there was just, like, there was no talk about Rick dying, because there was sort of no point, because everyone thought he was dead. So I think the way that he can die now is, like, at the very end. And, you know, now that he's already had his happy ending and all that, he can actually get his comic death now. Like, he, you can actually focus on that if you do tell more, more of a Rick story. And I do kind of want that, because the ending he got, I'm not that big of a fan of it, to be honest. Like, it's a happy ending, cool, and I'm happy that, you know, he's, he's going to be happy for a while. But just the story of Rick, I've always wanted to see Rick or Daryl die. 
I want to see one of the two characters die, for sure. I don't want it to be a thing where everyone's happy. I've always wanted one of the two characters to die. So at this point, now that Rick's able to die again, I'm going to say Rick. Daryl could die, sure. But I think that Rick dying would be pretty amazing because of what he's done with the CRM and everything. And I think the Rick Grimes statue would just be absolutely incredible. Because I think that Norman Reedus would probably want to play Daryl for a while too. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my preferred ending with all of this. Q&A, do you think Elizabeth Kublik will make a comeback and gain power now that uh, Major General Beale is gone? I don't think so, but I think she's allowed to be free now. So I think she's just going to go wherever she's able to go. No, she's allowed to leave now. So that would be absolutely incredible for her. But uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever see her again. You know, I think Tales of the Walking Dead just like, the more and more I think about it, I want a season two of that show. I just wish that Gimple didn't mess up the first season so much because like there's so many great stories like that that you can really get into. Like do an episode or two on Elizabeth Kublik, like bring the governor back or do stories like that, an animated episode. You know, like that's the stuff that people want to see, not what we got. Hune, do you think the Dama was ever a part of the CRM or possibly an infiltrator for the CRM at one point? Well, that is the, the thing that everyone's wondering. You know, she could be a spy and I wouldn't, you know, I would definitely, like, that's a really, I think, awesome theory, you know, if the Dama was a spy or she knows people that are spies, because Beale has spies everywhere, the Dama is in New York City, you know, uh, like, Beale would put spies in major cities all around the, the world, right? So, Kuna, you mentioned today in the video that the Triple P card might be a spy-related card. If that's the case, do you think that Heath was also a spy that Beale sent to Alexandria and then left after they split up? Um, I'm going to say no. I don't think that Heath was a spy at all. I, I really don't. I mean, that would be insane. Honestly, well, actually, now I'm thinking about what you said exactly there. That would actually be kind of insane if Heath was a spy the entire time. And so that was his like way of leaving right there. But I know Angela King did say that Jadis you know, gave him to the CRM, so I'm assuming that that's probably what happened. But if they changed a little bit there, I, I really wouldn't mind that. Because the one thing is, I don't believe Jadis would have that card, right? Doesn't really make a lot of sense for her to actually have the card. Since she was really nobody, and she was just sort of working with the CRM at that point, and she worked her way up from going you know, from just within the CRM. So yeah, I mean, I guess Heath could have had that card, right? Q&A, who was driving the helicopter if Rick and Michonne was not driving it? I mean, that's probably a random pilot because you can have a lot of people in, in a helicopter like that. So I think it was just like a random pilot or something like that. Q&A, do you think that Rick and Daryl will reunite in season two of the Daryl Dixon show? No, they're not reuniting in that show at all because that show is uh, doing a season three and it looks like they might not be filming in France, but that also could be something that they are working on. Now, I wouldn't mind them changing locations for a season three. Like, you don't have to be in France the entire time. And in a season two, it makes sense because Carol has to find him. So a lot of that makes sense. But maybe if Madame Jeanne dies and all that, that, you know, going to a new place there would be just that different. And there'd just be, you know, different threats and all that there. So, um, yeah, I don't think Rick's going to reunite with Daryl in uh, season two because they're already filming season three this june and i don't see rick being a part of that and it seems like they're still going to be like in france or around france so Q&A, do you think the ending to the ones who live was short and sweet because they don't want to give uh too much away for the future story i feel like uh, i don't know about that in terms of some of that but some of the the you know alternate scenes and you know behind the scenes stuff with like rick having his prosthetic hand and all that that i could see definitely for sure being a, a big part to you know the the future story here and why they probably cut that there because that could be a really awesome reveal in the next part of the story right like the first shot we see rick with that arm and it's like whoa this is comic book rick right so yeah i could see that you know being the real reason here for sure q a should rick have taken beale's deal on bringing his people to the crm if he did how would it have gone well they would have a lot of supplies and they'd be very very obviously happy there in terms of just having everything they need but uh portland would be gone and you know the commonwealth could be gone as well and i think that's where things get very very tricky as well and i think that's what would have been really exciting about a season two you know is that you have your family here and stuff and now you can sort of you know walk around freely and all that with your family but now it's like what if it turns into oh now we're going to attack the commonwealth right that gets very like oh what do we do now right so i think that could have been a fun part to the whole thing. Q&A, now that we know the full Echelon briefing could be the 14 years that Beale mentioned, is that a tease that the Walking Dead universe only has 14 or 15 years left in its run? Um, I mean, I guess that could be somewhat of a tease. I'm, I'm guessing that something will happen at some point in the next however long, five, six years of all this story here. 
where by the time we get to that point, that's not going to be an issue anymore. So, you know, we're about 14 years in, 14, 15 years in, I would say, into the apocalypse around that range. Uh, like, like for sure, up to 15 years into the apocalypse at, at this point. So, we, you know, another 14 years from now, like we're roughly, you know, it's getting close to like 30 years into the apocalypse. And so we'll have to wait to see at that point. You know, that could be a really interesting premise for, uh, you know, the walking to next generation with like Judith and everyone else all grown up and sort of, you know, helping out people and just whatever the story is going to be at that point. Right. Q&A, do you think that there's a chance that we could get Dead City season two by like, like late October? Because filming is starting April and will go until late June. So I think there is good time to get everything together. Like normally, yes. If this was like the way they used to do stuff, for sure, I could see it coming out late October. As of now, though, I just, I don't see them doing that because then what do they have coming out in 2025? They're filming Daryl season three right now, but like they're not going to wait and have that out. Like what? Like I don't even know. Like they would never be able to get that out for sure by early 2025. So I'm thinking that they're going to have uh, Daryl Dixon season three. They're filming that this year. That'll air a year later, you know, you know in um, uh, summer of 2025. And then Dead City season two, they're going to film it all now, edit everything. We'll get teasers and trailers throughout the year and all that building up to like a February release date. That's kind of my assumption. And this way you can have that air there. And then Daryl Dixon season three air later that summer. And then that takes you, you know, far enough in content going until the end of 2025. And then we'll see what happens next with Daryl Dixon Season 4 and Dead City Season 3, right? Then I think around that point, too, we should probably get another spinoff show, I'm guessing. And then, yeah, we'll see where The Ones Who Live Season 2 or whatever the new show is going to be, right? We'll see where, where it's at at that point there. I'm sure we'll have definitely an update, right? So, Q&A, how would you feel about a Roomba spinoff in The Walking Dead? Like, yeah, they killed off the first one, but there absolutely could have been Roomba survivors. Well, I think that there probably are some Roomba survivors out there, definitely, you know, like, some would be in, you know, closer to the buildings like the CRM and all of that. Uh, major cities and stuff, like, the, the problem with it is you need power and electricity to, to actually work. So, um, I would say, you know, within the CRM and places like that, yeah, I think uh, there's a, probably a lot of Roomba survivors. So, a spinoff there, yeah, I'd be okay with that. I mean, you would have to have, like, two or three Roombas in a household, though, right? And you know, one Roomba maybe doesn't work well with the others. Q&A, after the finale, we hear a news report about what happened at the base. Do you think it's possible that the news segment we hear during Tyrese's death is a CRM broadcast? Well, I would have to go back and listen to that exact broadcast and see what they were talking about, because that was a very, very long time ago. I don't know if it was CRM related. It really depends on what they were saying. I, like, honestly, I really do have to go back and and watch The Walking Dead, and especially that episode, just to see what they are mentioning. Because if that was a reference to that, that would be really amazing. Q&A, could the disease that Beale mentioned uh, be the same disease that we saw in Season 4? Um, I mean, I guess technically. I think what Beale was talking about there, which is very, very interesting, was, I think, a reference to variant walkers. Like, you know, there's stuff happening in France, yes, but I think that as these walkers start to mutate more and there's more of these, like, diseases and stuff going around, you're going to be dealing with people getting sick and there's all of that. And I think that these walkers can start to advance, especially when you have Madame Jeannette doing what she's doing over there. If any of those variant walkers came back, there would be issues there, right? And so it really just takes one person to become a walker who, you know, can become a variant walker to be in America, and then all of a sudden, that spreads everywhere, right? So I think that's probably where the next story is going to be going here. And uh, again, I, I really do think that what Major General Beale said in that scene, it's going to be really important for a lot of years to come. Q&A, why would Judith and RJ come to meet Michonne alone, and how does no one hear the helicopter? Seemed like a forced, only the kids allowed ending. Uh, didn't appreciate it at all. I mean, like, stuff like that I'm okay with. Like, that's the one thing, too, in terms of the, that explosion at the very end. Like, there's a lot of things in terms of plot armor that I do have to point out, because it is... It does, it is awful. Like, some stuff is actually pretty awful. Like, you should not have survived certain things. But a scene like that, like, yeah, there should have been others. But I feel like that was just more of a, you know, the cast members weren't around. And that happens all the time. Like, it's a very common thing in a lot of, like, uh, TV show universes or movie universes. There's always that question of, like, well, where's that person? And why wasn't that person there to help you? Or, you know, why isn't that person around? So, I think that's really just all this is, and they just wanted to have the family there together. But yeah, there probably should have been someone else. It is weird that Judith and RJ were just like sitting out there, but they're also old enough and they're able to protect themselves, you know, from walkers and stuff. So I think that that does make sense. Q&A, would you have liked to live a little bit longer in that episode one world 
where they were really building up the CRM. I really would have for sure. And looking back at it, that is like my favorite episode now because that's where we got all the CRM stuff, right? So that definitely is like my favorite episode now looking back on it. And I wish that they explored that a lot more going going forward. But that one is my favorite for sure because that's, you know, we're seeing Rick in the struggle there, right? So that for sure is like my absolute favorite like of the season. And uh, I'll have to go back and rewatch that episode at some point. I, I, I will binge all six episodes. I'll probably have to go back and binge like Dead City and then Daryl Dixon and then come back to The Ones Who Live and just kind of see my thoughts on all six series just like as a whole q a could rick go to france to find daryl since he found out that daryl spent years looking for him i actually wonder about that aspect to it because when rick goes home like rick and michonne are going home right now so what's the first thing that rick's gonna want to um do right obviously be with his family and all that but he's gonna wonder where everyone else is who survived and so there's a bunch of information that he's gonna find out about who died and all that right which is you know, kind of unfortunate that we're probably going to get a lot of that off screen. But Daryl is someone who's out there. And so Rick's going to be walking around doing all this stuff here. And then also just in the back of his head, just be like, Daryl was looking for me. Like he spent so many years looking for me and he's out there trapped right now. And so do I just stay here and wait for him or do I go out there and try and save him? I think, you know, at first he's going to spend some time with his family for a bit, but that definitely will be an aspect to a lot of this. He is going to want to go back and, I think, see him. But I don't know if he goes to France. So that's a little bit too much. Q&A, could we see a spinoff series about Major General Beale so that we could get to know him better? I think we could get an episode of him on like a show like Tales of the Walking Dead if they were to do a season two. That would be really amazing, just to learn a lot more there. But again, the budget would have to be really crazy for that show. So I just... You know, that could be the difference there. So I don't know if we will get that. But Q&A, now that The Ones Who Live concluded and Dead City and The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon being the only spinoffs left after or with another season coming out, would you like to see The Walking Dead franchise end with a movie bringing all the characters together again uh, to conclude the franchise or maybe jumpstart the franchise for a new era? Or would you rather they continue with the spinoffs? Uh, P.S. Been watching your channel since I was in the seventh grade. Currently now in college, thanks for the consistent uploads and amazing content over the years. That is crazy. <laughs> so insane to, to read that. But uh, yeah, that's amazing, though. Thank you so much for that. I think I would prefer them to have Daryl Dixon and Dead City go on for four or five seasons, even six seasons. You know, they, they are going to go on for a while. And then at some point, do a, another Rick and Michonne story. And I, I want that one to be more focused on other things. Maybe have Morgan there. Just another new story and, you know, focus on something else. And then do a, another series after that focusing on those characters because I think waiting another six years for you know another one where it reunites Daryl and Negan and everyone else I just don't want there to be only two series of it like obviously if that's all all we get fine but then they better make that second series like 10 episodes right because I don't want it to be six like six episodes just does not work in my opinion but anyways I'm gonna leave it here I actually got through all the questions and I made this Q&A very very long so I hope you guys all enjoyed this uh this is gonna be I mean, this is basically podcast length at this point. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, listening to me, I guess, uh, answer all these questions here. I, I hope it was entertaining, at least. If you actually made it to the very end, let me know, because that'd be really cool. But, yeah, anyways, post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.